Hey everyone, uh, so on YouTube or on Twitter recently, Hungrybox posted up a tweet saying, uh, you know, I only won $880, give or take, for uh, finishing second at Pound, and Pound being a larger event, it seemed, um, you know, relatively disappointing uh, because, uh, you know, the amount of time it takes him and the effort, it doesn't seem to quite match that, uh, that he only gets about a shade under $900 for second place. And this has stirred on a bunch of conversations in regards to you know the money in melee and i think the crux of the debate was like do we raise uh the pot not the venue fee the entry fee rather of uh tournaments for at least major events from 10 to 20 dollars um a lot of discussion around it and i think you know once or twice a year whether it's summit campaigning or you know commentary discussion the question of money always gets brought up in melee and so because this always goes full circle, I just want to just explain a few things. So first off, I get it. Um, I understand what it means to be a player. You know, once, you know, in the past I was, you know, a Smash player traveling to events, it gets really expensive. There's an opportunity cost, right? Uh, both it takes a lot of your time and a lot of your money. And uh, for some players, that means that they're taking two to three days off the stream. And, you know, that's a lot of money for, you know, a guy like Hungrybox or Mango to, you know, take that many days off. So want to express that there is an opportunity cost for a lot of people and also just being an adult right uh you have bills to pay you have a lot of things to cover and maybe you know for in cases like me going hungry bucks to make a lot of money um that it probably doesn't warrant you know the difference between like you know a few hundred if not even a thousand dollars but for the next tier players that aren't making it um, making a killing off of streaming or content creation um they're living pretty much you know paycheck to paycheck like it's like a sustainable living but nothing to really go home about and not like taking a tech job or anything like that it, it's enough to just kind of get by right and um so i get it it's you know it's a, it's a struggle being a smash player there just isn't a lot of money right and so first and first and foremost i just want to be abundantly clear um, given inflation and given that $10 has been the standard for a while um, and it hasn't gone up, whereas everything else has gone in pri up in price, you know, like whether it's food, travel, um, you know, Ubers, flights, uh, food, um, you know, all this stuff, even the event venue fees have gone up over time just because of inflation and the cost of stuff going up. I totally get it. It makes sense to raise the, the you know, I would say that 15 to 20 bucks is a fair proposition, right? And I think the argument that people make is, well, if people are already, you know, spending $500, you know, give or take, I would say that's probably the average. There are some people who come locally, they're not going to have to pay for a flight or a hotel. There are a lot of people, you know, who come out of the, out of the region, who come in, who are already spending hundreds, if not like a thousand dollars on all this stuff, like what's an extra 10 bucks. So the argument makes sense. Um, but overall, I think one of the, there's a couple of key points to kind of uh, unpack here, right? Um, Leffen mentioned that, you know, this doesn't really cover the standard of living or like not standard of living, but like, <laughs> it's not a worthwhile endeavor. If you are strictly trying to like make this, if you want to make this at least, you know, somewhat sustainable, um, even if the prize pool was like, let's say hundred bucks got $1,500 instead of $800 well, or $1,600, um, it doesn't really move the needle to be frank. Like if you're a player that isn't sponsored uh, most of your, your most of your prize earnings are going to go towards uh, travel and like the cost of doing all that stuff. So um, for people who are aiming to try to make a living or survive, it doesn't really help and it doesn't solve the root issues. Although I would say it does help. So um, so I, I think overall Aiden put it pretty well in his video, hopefully he puts up a link where um, 2xing, 3xing, 4xing the pot, it's it's a nice temporary solution and it feels nice, but it doesn't really cover the crux of some of the things that people have presented as like a competitor, right? Um, 25th place, or if we pay to like 7th place, you know, 9th place, 13th place, 17th place, so on and so forth, it's not enough for them to like make a living. And honestly speaking, like you have to invest a lot of time to, to make these top eights um, and melee people are so good, right? It's almost like it's a full-time kind of thing to, um, to, you know, be able to compete and play at that level. Um, so, but all in all, like, I think there's like a lot of debate on the other side of the coin, right? Um, you know, some event organizers have come out of the works, uh, volunteers also as well, where, um, they didn't say it directly, but I could sense a little bit of resentment. And what I mean by that is, 
Um, you know, and we're not at this extreme, but like I, I want to use this as kind of an example, right? Um, you're working the Super Bowl, right? And you're working minimum wage and you're selling beer for $50, like <laughs> a bottle or right or something ridiculous, right? And you're, you're in this atmosphere where the players playing on the field are making millions. Um, the venue and this whole like NFL system is making millions of dollars while you're making like $15 an hour and like it's a struggle, right? And so I can kind of sense, you know, if there is something, you know, going a little bit too far out of line here, like volunteers are going to be like, well, where my, where's my money for, you know, helping making this like event exist or event organizers where, you know, TLs like Genesis, they have to put up like a hundred to $200,000 up front to barely make anything, right? Or commentators, right? That's something that we bring up all the time. Commentators are underpaid, right? For example, when I was a commentator, the amount I got paid didn't cover my travel in most cases when I was doing, you know, eight to 10 to 12 hours of commentating throughout the weekend. It covered my hotel room. If I was lucky, maybe my flight, but like all my, I would come out a net negative. So what I'm really trying to get at here is that the collective money pot, that's the, the, the collective ecosystem of Smash is just really small. And I think in the most, I think everybody agrees, right? At least in the Smash community, that we would love to see TOs um, have much more of a sustainable business models. We would love our commentators to get paid. We want our event organizers to get paid. We want our volunteers to get paid more. We want our top players to be rewarded um, for their accomplishments, right? Um, but fact of the matter is, there just isn't that much money in Smash, and that's just the harsh reality that we face. And the hard part about it, right? And this is like where like. It's like you have different groups of people who are marginalized here. Not, I wouldn't say marginalized is a good word, but like, it's like when you have a group of kids fighting over something like really small. And I don't say Smash people are kids, but the analogy I'm trying to present here is like you're having people just fight over scraps, right? And the issue that I have here is that it it often puts our event organizers, volunteers, and top players, commentators all against each other, right? To like compete to get that extra little percentage of the small pie, right? And it, it tends to turn ourselves um, ourselves against each other, right? When we should be kind of thinking of this from a different lens, right? We all have a small pie. The question shouldn't be, how do I take away from the ecosystem? But it's more like, how do we make the pie bigger, right? Like, what is the strategy to get the pie to a place where everybody's getting their fair share, they're, everyone's getting fairly compensated, right? And a lot of people initially would go like, why don't we just have you know, the community pay for it, right? Like, that's been a common approach in the past, right? Um, we had everything from the Spirit Bomb. You know, we've had compendiums in the past, fundraisers, summit campaigns. And I can just tell you, um, I've mentioned this countless times before, there is just a limited amount of money that comes through it, right? And what tends to happen is that there's fatigue over time, right? If, you know, a tournament, you know, says, like, check out our compendium in our shop, and multiple tournaments do it, and then we do good player funds and then players go like, well, I also need money to travel. And we do like sub goals. Um, we try to do, you know, stores. Um, what you tend to notice is there's massive diminishing returns the more of these campaigns run. So it's not a resource that you can tap into all the time. Um, and we even saw this to the to an extent with five Dom versus Genesis, where not that many people really donated, to be honest. And um, there's an anonymous person that I'm not um, that actually paid the staff uh, ten thousand dollars to run the event, uh, right? Because it takes a lot of work. But even even then, with the community efforts, it didn't really, you know. I of course am very appreciative of the money that went to Genesis from Genesis, but it didn't really ma amount to hitting the goal that it did. And again, I'm highly appreciative of everyone who donated, but I'm just really trying to highlight that it's just it's just it's just small, right? At the end of the day, it's pretty small. Um, and so, and so I'm trying to tie this all together, right? Because we go full circle when we talk about commentators or we talk about summit campaigns, we talk about top player and prize pots, right? And we talk about tournaments not being, um, not, not being sustainable, right? And this is like where everything ties together, right? And then, um, you're going to need, and part of why circuits exist and why people value the Nintendo relationship, even if Nintendo doesn't give money, is because of the next point I'm trying to make, right? Uh, the, hopefully the first half of this video has indicated and highlighted that there's only so much that we as a community can do to provide for the ecosystem, right? The next step is, you know, like, how do we get outside funding, right? And uh, things like Papa John's are really exciting opportunities for me and for us. 
because they're providing a ludicrous amount of money. And I don't know the exact amount, but given that there have been breadcrumbs of Slime saying this is the biggest deal that Smash has seen and that they're providing for 8 to 10 events, like that might be as much as hundred fifty dollars to $300,000, right? And that's a lot of money, right? If you look, we collectively as a community have raised $93,000 for breast cancer for EVA, right? And we consider that to be a lot of money, but I would say that's a massive overextension of us as a community. Like if we had another donation drive the week after, we wouldn't be able to like maintain that. And so I just want to just like kind of highlight that as a point of comparison that, um, that we can scrounge and we can scrap, but it's never going to really quite hit the level of a successful um, sponsor, right? Like it's like, it's like trying to find pennies, right? When like we need to be hitting home runs with like these sponsorship deals. And that's why I like BTS so much because they have a competent sales team and that they actually pitch. And so when people complain about Summit taking money, like part of it is that they have created a system for them that they can hire good salespeople, that they can hire good production that's presentable and then turn that and parlay that into their sales team so that they can um, actually provide these things, uh, these sponsorships for our TOs and our events. And, you know, one of the big things here, right? Like, let's say we split, um, I'm just doing ballpark numbers. Let's say the number was like 150K and there's like 10 events, right? That's 15 extra thousand dollars on average per an event, right? Imagine if we had to do a compendium where it's not just selling $15,000 worth of goods. It's we have to profit 15K, right? For us to sell with the margins of the cost of goods, you know, fees, we probably have to sell $50,000, 50, $50,000 worth of goods um, to hit that like $15,000 profit margin, right? And that's a lot of money. But here, like we have just one single sponsor providing that much money. And, um, and I think that's great, right? Like rather than um, and things like that will move the needle for us more than raising a tournament fee five dollars, right? If we like look at this in perspective, right? Getting another five bucks from you know eight hundred competitors, that's four thousand dollars, right? Um, that's cool and all, but like I need to explain this um, in another way too. Um, when you take money from one part of the ecosystem, there's a tr negative trickle effect that happens, right? So let's say out of like the eight hundred players, right? We survey them and say like. If we raise the venue fee from, I don't know, 10 to 20 bucks, right? Like who will stay, right? And let's say a reasonable amount of people, let's say 95% of people say like, I would still come to the event, right? Um, I don't think it's, I think it's pretty reasonable to say that like, if we were to say like 5% aren't willing to come, maybe they're locals, maybe they're younger, maybe like they just don't have that money to spare. Maybe like, for example, if they go to Genesis and they're like a San Jose native, maybe that $10 actually does make a difference for like a small percentage of people. Here's what happens, right? Let's say like 5% of people are now priced out of this, right? Then what's gonna happen is, um, let's say the venue fee is like 70 bucks, right? If 5% of 800 people, which is 40 people, decide I no longer can afford this, I, it's actually not wanting me to come anymore, um, that's 40 people times $70 in venue fees per person, and the TO loses $2,800, right? And so you can see there's a misalignment of incentives here, right? Like every, if a TIA was guaranteed like more from the event to say like they can raise the prices $10 to the entry fee, and that meant that this wasn't gonna price out people, then I think there would be alignment here. Um, but you know, if that causes a decent amount of people to, to not come, that actually eats into the revenue of the tournament. And so, um, Again, I just want to just kind of reiterate here that outside sources and whatever we can find is going to be the solution um, for us. Otherwise, um, we're going to have to continue to live in this pipe dream where we're just fighting over a small piece of pie where um, once twice a year, we're going to see tournament organizers come out and say, like, we don't make money. Like, we have to raise our event review prices and everybody being mad and then commentators being like, we're not getting paid. Event organizers complain that they are volunteers saying, yeah, we actually don't get paid either. We just get a top eight pass and that's it. And top players being like, well, what the heck? Uh, I only got $800 per second. So um, so yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting conversation, right? And this is something that Blur and I have you know, talked about a long time about our dreams of a circuit and if things were to ever happen. But I think the good news is this, right? We're starting to see glimmers of the Smash monetization evolving, right? I don't want to say it's all doom and gloom, like, 
And if you notice, uh, this is kind of like an interesting thing um, that has subconsciously come out where you guys have probably observed this fact is that um, either VG Bootcamp or Summit have, you know, effectively bought the rights of most streams. And I think that's a smart move overall. Um, if you came into the scene in 2018 and before, you would see that every every tournament had their own like kind of local streamer do the stream. Um, and the issue with that is that um, it's hard to sell, you know, kind of one ofs. Uh, so like if you're a local streamer and you have like one a big event a year, um, it's really hard to sell that to sponsors or to even like remotely get any interest in terms of sales or anything or partnerships or anything like that. But with BTS buying up everything and things banding together, now it's a much more sellable, um, attractive asset for people. Now, the big question that comes up now is Papa John's uh, took the kind of took the step forward. And to my understanding, I don't know what BTS's relationship is with Nintendo. I know Panda says that Nintendo is partnered with them. I don't know to what extent BTS um, has that. But on the flip side, you know, one of the big questions that come up, and I've said this in prior videos, is um, that Nintendo sponsorship is pretty key to a lot of um, non-endemic partners. And by but what I mean by that, by non-endemic, are people that you would normally that aren't embedded into the gaming space. So Papa John's would be an example of them. They're a food company, right? And they're not especially targeted towards uh, gamers, although a lot of gamers eat pizza. Um, but, you know, just when you get into large corporate kind of protections and safety, if you're, you know, offering your pocketbooks of money to, uh, to events, to partner with them, they're going to ask, you know, like, are you allowed to stream? Is there any risk to partnering with you? And the common roadblock is, yeah, like Nintendo could shut us down at any moment, just FYI, um, we don't have the official license or whatever, right? And so I have to give kudos to Papa John's. Like, I don't know if BTS has that, but um, for partnering with us, understanding that there might be risks. I could be um, misrepresenting the, um, I could be misrepresenting the rep uh, the relationship or the licenses that BTS has, but hoping to see like, m m you know, rather than us, you know, again, fighting over, you know, pennies within the scenes, metaphorically speaking, or like, you know, scraps, um, that we continue to reach out and that um, we continue to root for um, kind of the people who, with the business backgrounds to hit these home runs and to create activations uh, within with our space because that's just simply going to just bring more like magnitudes more money than what we can just muster up five bucks at a time. So those are just my thoughts. Um, again, just to summarize everything. Um, yeah, it makes sense, um, you know, to raise um, to raise event fees specifically or entry fees um you know like there's inflation and you know again like i do believe that five to ten bucks isn't going to move the needle for mo the majority of the scene um like people spend hundreds of dollars to get to it so what's the difference between four hundred dollars and four hundred ten dollars like so to me it makes sense in the end it doesn't fix a lot of our root issues as a community the pie is only so big and the best way we can go about solving this is by looking for outside sources of funding that aren't just the community